education policy and legislation has long been a passion of State Senator Dave Sicola. Chairman of the Senate Education Committee, Sicola is our first person this week. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. Well, Governor Carney has made it his mission to reform five high poverty, low performing schools in Wilmington that are part of the Christina School District. You were at his community meeting last week at Byard Middle School. What are your thoughts about this latest effort to improve struggling schools like Byard where 2% of the kids are proficient in math, 5% in English, but 98% get promoted year after year? I think his uh, process is a big improvement. Um, you know, sometimes the policy can be right, but the process needs to involve all the stakeholders so that you get ownership of uh, what, you, what you decide. And there's a lot of different ways you can turn around a school, but whatever the decisions are made, uh, in order for them to be implemented in a, in a way with fidelity, uh, you have to have that stakeholder involvement and support. And that can be a messy process. Well, it seems like it, it's gonna take a little while before they get their memorandum of understanding. But after the meeting, uh, I asked Carney about, you know, what kind of system do we have where proficiency is so low, but you know everybody gets promoted on to the next grade. And he, he said it borders on uh, being immoral. How do you feel about that? And what kind of system do we have if kids are, you know, can't, aren't up to speed in any of the subjects, but they get moved along? Yeah, educators will tell you social promotion does not work. They will also tell you retention doesn't work. And, and that's the, the, the $64,000 question is, what are you going to do different? And, uh, and, and there are some unique things that are being done around the country, and I don't know that there's a silver bullet that's really working well for anyone, but, but you have to identify uh, students where they are and, and try to make progress from there, try to make regular uh, uh, efforts to improve what they know and what they can do uh, so, that, so that you can justify those decisions at the end of the year. I mean, is it healthy to have 15-year-olds in grade school I mean right. you know I mean that's that's sort of the issue and yeah. I substituted for a little while and you know teachers told me look we just can't have 16 year olds in in seventh grade yeah that, that's that's the part that retention doesn't work but you also saw why social promotion doesn't work and so uh, certain kinds of um, academies or, or, or you know academic specialty programs uh, really need to be implemented and they need to be implemented where the student is uh, you, you have to take uh, what you get and work from there. Uh, if, um, if it, one of the big problems with No Child Left Behind was children were tested on grade level. So if a child was three or four years below grade level, they were really frustrated with the assessment. If they were three or four years above grade level, they were bored stiff with the assessment. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you, you have to, uh, to, to make progress from, from where the student is. Now speaking of Christine, I know you followed our recent uh, story on the exodus of students from the district. Nearly four in 10 go to either charter schools or they choice to schools outside the district. Uh, it, can they reverse this trend or are they gonna have to close perhaps one of the high schools where there's I think uh, 1,700 or 2,700 empty seats? Yeah, if you, um, you know, you, your, your options are very limited if your high school population gets very low. You can run a successful high school with uh, that, that doesn't have a lot of students, but it's so much better if you want to offer a variety of foreign languages, a variety of advanced placement op options. Uh, and, and so they have to work with the community. This is what, what we call the messy part. Uh, and you're never gonna get full consensus, but if you get a critical mass of stakeholder support, um, the change can then be sustainable. If you don't, You'll change, but you're going to have to change again in a couple of years. And this is where uh, Christine has had their problems in the past. And, and I'm a little bit more optimistic about the process that's being used this time than previously. Now, Christina wouldn't provide an estimate or any documentation about what it cost to maintain Christiana High School last year. Now, this is a school with just 700 kids, 44% of capacity. What do you think about this? Is this the kind of transparency we want in Delaware, or you want as a legislator? So, uh, no, I would like to see uh, more transparency than that. And, and also, I, after reading your article, um, I looked back at their website, because I remember they had a strategic plan, a 2014 to 2017 strategic plan. And, and clearly, 
Freedom of Information Act does not require an entity to create a document that's requested. If they have a document, they have to provide it. If you look at their strategic plan and the kinds of things that were in there, it would seem intuitively obvious that they would create a document that either would answer the questions you asked or come pretty close and, and they could have offered that and said, is this okay? Uh, so um, right now they're a little bit on the defensive. So maybe uh, maybe it wasn't a real good time to ask for that, but, but I would hope that uh, openness and transparency and inclusiveness are a big part of them going forward. So um, just real quick, um, budget season coming up, you had a 26 million last year. What's, what, what do you think's looming in this next budget cycle? Um, the, the first defect was a little more encouraging, but you know there, there are some nuanced reasons why, uh, and so we'll, we'll see with the next one uh, where we go. Representative Earl Jakes and I are both chair of the Education Committee. We met yesterday with uh, the combined uh, school chiefs group and with the uh, Newcastle County Business Partnership. Uh, the school chiefs' uh, number one priority is restoration of that, uh, that money. Um, that's a reasonable request on their re on their part. Um, we've had a task force from back when Markel was governor about the sustainability of our revenues. That's a big challenge, uh, and and we know that there's um, uh, the system needs to be changed a little bit to make for more sustainability in our revenue stream. Okay. Well, as always, we could talk all day, but time is running short. So, Dave Sacol is a state re senator representing the Newark and Hocassin area. See our full interview online at whyy.org slash news.